Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at scriptable objects. For those of you joining me for the first time, I have a previous video on setting up this scene, but if you don't want to use this, you can treat the scriptable objects as a separate tutorial. I'll still be talking about the concepts and principles of it, uh, so this is not necessary. If you've never used scriptable objects before, you can think of them as containers for configuration data. They're extremely useful uh, and very, very flexible when prototyping a game, but even uh, when releasing a game as well. So we're going to start out by adding in a new folder. We're going to call this one scripts because we didn't have one in the previous video and a second folder called scriptable objects. Now in my scripts folder, I'm going to be creating a shop manager script. I'm also going to make a shop item scriptable object, so SO. And then I'm going to create the last one called shop template. So I'm going to try something a little bit different with this video. Because it's quite a long one, I'm going through a fairly large amount of code. I recorded this before and it took me about 30 minutes. So instead what I'm going to try is I'm going to have all of the work coded in there. And then as we talk through the code and as we implement things, I'll uncomment code so that we eventually end up with the full project. But it saves me the time of basically typing in all the code. But I'll still go through the full in-depth explanation of why I've got each of the pieces of code there. It just saves a bit of time. If this is the kind of format that you like, uh, let me know in future videos. If this doesn't work out, just let me know and we'll go back to writing code the way we were before. Okay, so the first script we're gonna look at is the shop item scriptable object. Now in this script, you'll notice that I'm deriving from scriptable object as opposed to deriving from mono behavior. This is really useful because this means that I'm able to reference data and use data without having to assign it to a game object. So everything that derives from on a behavior needs to be attached to a game object in my scene for it to be able to be used. In this case, I can create all of this configuration data and not necessarily attach it to any game object, but just reference it directly inside of my scripts. It's gonna come in handy a lot later on. The data we're gonna be storing in this case is going to be a string for our title, a string for our description, and a string for our base cost. Now that's pretty obvious because in our panel we have a title, a description, and a base cost. Note I'm storing this base cost as an integer because we actually plan to use it in some of our calculations later on, uh, but we convert it to a string later when we actually do use it as text. There's also a bit of code up the top here for creating an asset menu. So this is just standard Unity, this is not scriptable object related, but what it does is it allows you to create a menu item so that when I right click and go create, I've got scriptable objects new shop item. So I've got my file name, which is my shop menu, in my menu name, it's scriptable objects and then new shop item. And then I've put it as order one so that it appears the first in the list when I go to create something. Now, because I've created this public string description and base cost, every time I create a new shop item, it creates a shop menu. And in that shop menu, I'm gonna name this one armor. And for my armor, I will give it the title armor. I will say a shiny brand new piece of chainmail. And I'm gonna make it cost 10. Now, as I was saying before, this is all configuration data. So later on, I'm gonna be filling the panels with the individual information that I'm pulling from here. I'm gonna create a couple more just so we have some to reference. Remember to duplicate is by pressing Control D. I'm gonna add in a weapon, I'm gonna add in a pair of shoes, I'll add in a hat, and I'll add in a shield. I've done my armor, I will just call this hat. It can be a flimsy hat. I'm not sure why anyone would ever buy this. And it can cost me 30 coins. My shield, a wooden fence I stole from my neighbor's house. And it can cost me one <laughs> and a bit of my dignity. My shoes, uh, we'll call them shoes. And we'll just say a nice pair of Nikes. And because they're Nikes, they can cost me 200 and a weapon, uh, call this weapon, and we'll say a giant broadsword, 
Not sure how you would use a shield with this, but good luck. And we'll make this cost uh, 15. <clears throat> okay, so my shop runs on coins. So I'm going to need a method that I am able to generate some coins with. And for that, I'm going to need a button. And I'll just move that up here. And I'll call this generate coins button and in here it can just say generate coins minimize that and I will also need a place to display the coins that I've got so back on my shop again I'm going to add some text we'll put it to the top right and I will call this coins and then I'm going to put some stars there just so I know that because I'm going to be creating this number from my script, I want to know if the script's not working. So I've just put those stars there so that I know if I see that in the gameplay, I've run into a problem. <laughs> now we'll tackle our second easiest script, which is the shop template. In our shop template, we are actually only really grabbing a reference to the text elements, the text mesh pro elements that we had. So we're going to be using TM pro because that allows us to get the TMP underscore text element. And then we're going to have the same, a title, description, and a cost. And we are going to use this script and attach it to our item template. Now, if you remember in the previous video, I was talking about the usefulness of creating your item templates as a prefab. And this really highlights it because what we're able to do is add our shop template to this object here and then drag our text, drag our description and drag our price text into these fields. And what will happen is every single place where this exists inside of the scene has already now been populated with all of the correct information. And it's useful because it, it populates it to the game object that it's the child of. So in this case, Oops. In this case, the text element is this one here. And in this case, the text element is this one here. It also works if I duplicate this out to be a much larger number of items. So I can see that even these later ones that are getting created are already populated, which is super useful. So now we're going to look at our shop manager. Our shop manager is the piece which is going to be holding everything together. It's the script which makes everything run. We've got our, our generate coins function in there. We've got a check to make sure we're able to purchase something which is referencing our coins. We pull together all of our configuration data into our shop manager and then we reference it out into the different other places so that we can then see it inside of the scene. So we'll take this one piece at a time because there's a fair bit of code in here. And it can look a bit overwhelming at first, but we're going to start with the generation of coins. So the first thing that we're going to need is our TMP and our Unity Engine UI. And we've got a public int for our coins and some text that holds our coin text. That will be this text here. Now we've got a function called add coins. And in add coins, we are going to be increasing the number of our coins. And then we're going to be setting the text to be coins and a space, and then whatever our coin balance is at the time. I also have a piece in here called check purchasable, but we will come back to that one a little bit later. So for now, let's just make sure that this works. In our shop menu here, we've got our shop manager. And we can see that our coin UI is here. Now our coin UI, was this text here that I didn't name, but I will rename now. We'll just call that coin UI text. And now when I hit play on the game, it does nothing. And that is because there's two things that we need to do. One, this button does nothing. And two, I haven't set it to run when it first starts in the scene. So in my start function here, I'm looking at coin UI dot text is equal to coins and then plus the balance of the coins that I have at the moment, which should be zero at this point. And my add coins function, I need to add to my generate coins button here. So add this, drag in my shop, oops, drag in my shop, shop manager and add coins. And now what you'll see when I play is that I have zero coins to begin with, and every time I click this, I am generating a coin. 
which is great. But you can also see that obviously none of the panels have any information yet and none of the buttons really do anything here. Now that we can generate coins, the next thing I want to look at is taking this configuration data and putting it onto my panels. So we do that inside of our shop manager script and we do that inside of a function that I've called load panels. Now load panels also has some extra configuration data up here. So we have a public shop item scriptable object array named shop items SO. And what this is going to be is this is going to be the collection of all of these items put into the array on my shop manager script. The second thing that we're going to need is our shop panels. So this is the shop template script that I made and that was attached to each one of these panels. That basically just has a reference to what the title text is, what the description is, and what the coin cost is. So in my load panels function, what I'm gonna be doing is looking at my shop items scriptable object, and I'm gonna look at the length of that array. So in this case, it will be five because I've got five items here. And then I'm gonna say for zero until five, I'm going to have a look at the shop panel. So for the first shop panel, I'm gonna be setting its title, its description, and its cost to what I have inside of the scriptable object. So we'll see, you'll see it when it plays out, but what we're gonna do is I'm gonna drag in a reference for these, the scriptable object array and the shop template array. And what that will look like is in my shop, lock this down, grab my item templates, drag them onto my panels, and then grab my scriptable objects and drag them onto my scriptable objects. And you'll note here that because I have five scriptable objects and I can have any number of panels, I wanna make sure that the, when I'm looping through this, I'm looping through this for the number of shop items that I actually have rather than the panels that I have. Because if I have less panels, if I have more panels, then I have shop scriptable objects, then I'm gonna run into an issue where it's gonna tell me my index is out of bounds. There's one other piece of code I need to add in here, and that's in my start function. I need to make sure that I'm actually loading the panels. So when I go back into my game now, I'm just gonna save it quickly and then hit play. What we should see is my information is now populated and it gets populated in the order that I've put it through in this list. So armor comes first, then hat, then shield, then weapon, Oh, then shoes, then weapon. And it's looped through the first five, and then because I've run out of them, all of the rest of this is still just saying title description, and that doesn't really look that great. The other issue that we have is that in here, the purchase buttons, one, don't do anything, but also they sort of, they allow you to purchase right now, which they really shouldn't. So we're gonna deal with both of those now. The first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to grab my list of item templates, and I'm gonna flick them off. And then what I'm gonna do is inside of my start function, I'm going to enable this for loop here. Now what this for loop does is again, I'm looping through the number of scriptable objects that I have inside of my shop. And then I'm grabbing the shop panel game object, which is an element that we haven't yet uh, uncommented. And I'm gonna be setting it to active. So real quick, I will uncomment this. And this shop panels game object is a reference to the same game objects as the shop panels, but the difference here is that the shop panels were referencing the script directly, whereas this is referencing the game object. I could use the script, the shop panels, and then say dot game object, but the less finding I'm doing inside of my code, the better it is for performance. And really it's not a lot of work to add this in. So I'm going to add in my shop panels now. Again, I'll just lock that down, click here, shift click, and then drag that in. So now I've got 10 shop items, I've got five shop items, and I've got 10 panels and 10 script panels. So what happens now when I hit play is I will see that it does populate the first five, but now it's still kept those other six inactive. Five or six, five. <laughs> it's kept the other five inactive. So that's very useful because it means that if I were to add an extra one of these scriptable objects, all I would need to do is add one more to my scriptable object list and it would automatically create it on the next runtime, which is extremely scalable. Let's, for example, say I had this, drag this onto my list and hit play. And immediately I've got all the information for my weapon. 
Uh, that can seem like quite a trivial thing, but when you have to do this uh, five, ten times, and you've got 30 or 40 different game objects, it can be extremely efficient and very, very time-saving. If nothing else, it's just good for the soul to see things automatically work. That's as far as we're going to be using scriptable objects in this tutorial. I'm going to do a bit more coding here to enable some nice features so that you're able to spend some of your money, and also I'm disabling the buttons when you aren't able to spend. But if you've come to just see how scriptable objects work, uh, I hope I've taught you something and I hope it's been quick and efficient. If you've enjoyed it, please let me know. Otherwise, let's move on with the tutorial.